Welcome back to Students Teach Orgo. In this video, we're going to continue talking about organometallic chemistry by discussing the fundamental reactions of metal complexes. There are six main reactions we'll be going over in this video. However, five of these reactions are reversible. So in total, there will be 11 reactions that we talk about. It's important to note that in these reactions, there are three criteria that we're going to look at uh, to determine what changed during the reaction. We're going to look at the number of ligands that are in the complex, we're going to look at the oxidation state of the metal, and we're also going to look at the total number of electrons in the complex. So this first reaction here, um, going from left to right is Lewis base dissociation, and going from right to left would be Lewis base association. And basically all that's happening here is a ligand is popping on and off of the metal, right? So if we're going from left to right here, we can see that this bond breaks and goes onto the phosphorus, and that leaves this PR3 um, floating around in solution. And if we went from right to left, all that would be happening is, happening is that this phosphorus would attack the rhodium and uh, would now be attached over here. So you can see that we're changing the number of ligands when we go um, in either direction, right? Over here there's six ligands, but over here there's five. The oxidation state doesn't change during this reaction, reverse or forward, um, but the number of electrons does change, right? Because when this phosphorus leaves, it's taking these two electrons with it. And so over here, this complex has 18 electrons, but on the right, this complex has 16 electrons. The next fundamental reaction is oxidative addition and reductive elimination. Um, in this case, you can see that going from left to right, we have oxidative addition. And we're adding two ligands uh, compared to what we had on the left. Right On the left, there's four ligands, but now there's six. And you can kind of think about this as the rhodium is inserting itself in between that hydrogen-hydrogen bond in this example um, to make it so that way now the rhodium's right in the middle there. When we do this, we're changing the oxidation state of the metal because these hydrogens are X-type ligands that are going to oxidize the rhodium. Right? So we go from rhodium 1 over here, because uh, this rhodium is attached to one X-type ligand, so its oxidation state is 1, where now this rhodium is attached to three uh, X-type ligands, H, H, and Cl. So now we have rhodium 3. You can see that the electron count of the complex also changes as you go forward or go backwards. There's more electrons um, in the complex when the rhodium is inserted between the hydrogen bond uh, as on the left here. The next reaction we look at is ligand insertion and ligand deinsertion. Now this is an interesting one because there's two main ways of thinking about it you could see that going from left to right here, you could think about this ethene group inserting itself between the rhodium-hydrogen bond. I guess I should probably draw it going to this one instead. Or you could think about this hydrogen kind of migrating from the rhodium to the ligand. And so either way of thinking about it is um, will we'll work and you know will allow you to recognize this. Um, so I ch choose whichever one your brain uh, likes more. But if we have a ligand that's migrating from the metal to another ligand, that would be ligand insertion. Whereas over here, if we have a atom or molecule migrating from a ligand to the metal, that would be ligand deinsertion going this way. So you can see that going from like right to left, we can think about this hydrogen moving from these carbons and instead going to the rhodium, which would give us something like this. In these reactions, the number of ligands changes. Over here we have six ligands, where over here we only have five. Again, you can think of it because um, one of these ligands moved to another ligand, so there is one less ligand on the right side here. Uh, the oxidation state doesn't change, however the number of electrons in the complex does. I also just wanted to mention that certain cases of ligand deinsertion are called beta hydride elimination. And so you can see that if this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta car carbon, 
we're eliminating this beta hydride when it moves over to rhodium. And so if you hear um, the term beta hydride elimination or it's in a, a test question or a test answer, just realize that's referring to a specific type of ligand deinsertion. The next reaction is Lewis acid dissociation and Lewis acid association. At a glance, it seems very similar to that first fundamental reaction I showed you, where the only difference between these two complexes is that this complex on the right has added this extra ligand that came from solution. However, this reaction is a little bit more strange than that. Uh, we know that boron has three valence electrons, and right now that boron is making three bonds to fluorine, which means that currently this boron has no lone pairs. Now generally we think of the transition metals as being very not electronegative, meaning that they aren't good bases, and most of the time when a ligand is added, it's the ligand that is using its electrons to become associated with the metal. In this case though, boron doesn't have any lone pair that it can use to form this complex with the tungsten. So in this very odd case, the tungsten is kind of acting as a base and using some of its lone pairs to attack the boron to create this complex we see here on the right. Now we can see that when that happens, we're obviously changing the number of ligands, going from four ligands over here to five on this side, but you can see that we're also changing the oxidation state by a factor of two. Uh, now this is definitely a little strange, but if you um, use that formula that I talked about in the last video to calculate the oxidation state, it should make sense. You can see here too that the number of electrons does not change um, for either Lewis acid dissociation or association. In this next reaction, uh, called oxidative coupling or going backwards reductive decoupling, you can see that we're forming a bond between two ligands. So if we think about it, this CO2 group is forming a bond to this ethene group to create this ring that we see down here. Now, how does this happen? Um, well, we'll notice that on the left here, both of these ligands are neutral, meaning that because the metal is coordinating to the pi bonds of these ligands, um, they're going to be L-type ligands, because if they'd associated, they would be neutral. However, over here, if this ligand dissociated, we would put a negative charge on that carbon, which would give it a negative charge, a carbon ion. So this would be an X-type ligand. And the same is true over here. If we put these electrons onto the oxygen, if it was associating, um, that oxygen would have a negative charge. So this is also an X-type ligand. So because we're going from you know two neutral ligands to two ligands that would have a charge when dissociated, we are oxidizing the molybdenum as we go from the left to the right. So you can see that in this reaction, the number of ligands stays the same, but the oxidation state changes by a factor of two as these two neutral ligands become these X-type ligands. You can see that the number of electrons in the complex also changes when this occurs. Our last fundamental reaction here is transmetallation. Uh, you can see in this reaction, which is going from the right to the left, that we are taking this ligand represented by X and moving it from the palladium to the zinc. And we are taking the ligand down here labeled as R1 and moving it from the zinc to the palladium. Now, transmetallation uh, encompasses many different kinds of reactions that move ligands from one metal to another. So in this case, we're not looking at specific changes in oxidation state or um, the electron count or ligand count, but basically just be able to recognize that if you ever have a ligand that's moving from one metal to another metal, that you're probably looking at transmetallation. This is a summary table that I created that tries to encompass all of those criteria changes that we've been talking about for those reactions. So you can see this is all 10 of the reactions, not including transmetallation. And 
Each box here just gives a brief summary about how each criteria changes. So you can see that, for example, for Lewis based association, dissociation, we are um, losing ligands. So the number of coordinated ligands goes down when that reaction happens. So this is here for um, everyone to review. And then we have a practice question here. This is the Heck reaction which we will talk about more in the next video. Um, and we're using this as a way to help us be able to recognize these fundamental reactions that we just talked about in this video. And it also gives us more practice for electron counting. Uh, now, if you'd like to review electron counting, feel free to watch the last video um, that was an introduction to organometallic chemistry. Um, and if you'd like to try this question yourself, uh, feel free to pause the video and go through it. However, I'm going to go through it myself right now. So there's a lot going on in this catalytic cycle, so I just wanted to point out a few things. First, we have this palladium catalyst, and this palladium catalyst is catalyzing this reaction between this aryl bromide and this ester that has an alkene, and it's coupling these two things together to give us a product that looks like this. So let's start here at number one, and we'll start by counting up the electrons. Uh, palladium is a group 10 metal, and that means it has 10 electrons in the ground state. The metal contributes 10 electrons, and the ligands contribute 4 electrons. And I can get this number 4 by saying that there's 2 ligands that both contribute 2 electrons. This L ligand here is um, shown down in the bottom right hand corner here. And we know that phosphorus um, is an L-type ligand because if it's dissociated, it's still neutral. And so we would multiply the number of L-type ligands, there's two of them, by two. And that would give us that this complex has 14 electrons. Next, let's look at the reaction going from one to two. We can see that in the reaction, the palladium kind of inserts itself into this bond between the bromine and the benzene ring. And that gives us this complex down here. We can see that the palladium is oxidized during this reaction because now it is plus two. This reaction would be oxidative addition because we are taking the metal, inserting it into the bond, and increasing the number of ligands by two and increasing the oxidation state by two. So this reaction is oxidative addition. Next, let's count up the electrons in this complex. Palladium, as we already established, has 10 electrons in its ground state. We already established that L's are both L-type ligands, and so they contribute four electrons. 2 times 2. But we also have these two new ligands that are both X-type ligands. And they're X-type ligands because if they dissociated, that bromine would have a negative charge. And if this dissociated, there would be a negative charge on this carbon. So remember that in the shortcut method for finding the number of electrons, we're going to multiply the number of X-type ligands by 1, which would give us 10 plus 4 plus 2 which means this complex has 16 electrons. Now let's look at this reaction going from two to three. We can see that we are incorporating a new ligand here, that the palladium is now coordinated to the double bond of this ester containing molecule. The reaction type that would fit this kind of pattern is Lewis base association. So let's examine the electron count for this complex shown at number three. Palladium is still contributing 10 electrons. The two L-type ligands are both contributing two electrons. But now we also have to recognize that this pi system, this new ligand, is also an L-type ligand because it would be neutral if dissociated. So it's going to be three times two now. Plus we still have the two 
X-type ligands, giving us a total of 18 electrons. Next, let's look at this reaction going from 3 to 4. We can see that it's almost like this benzene ring is moving from the metal and going to this ligand with an ester, right? If we followed this arrow and just kind of went like that, that shows that this, this benzene ring is no longer attached to the metal like it is over here. Now this benzene ring is attached to a ligand. And so if we have a ligand that moves from a metal to another ligand, this would be an example of ligand insertion. And so now let's analyze the um, electron count here at uh, complex four. Palladium, still contributing 10 electrons. We have two L-type ligands, still, two times two, which would be four. Plus, now we have th this bromine is still an X-type ligand, and this whole molecule right here would be an X-type ligand, because if it dissociated, there would be a negative charge on this carbon. So we just say plus two for the two X-type ligands, meaning that this complex has 16 electrons. Now let's look at the reaction going from four to five. We can see in this case, it's almost as if this hydrogen moved from the ligand to the metal, right? It's like if we drew an arrow like this, the hydrogen that was once attached to this carbon is now attached to the metal. And any time that we have a molecular atom move from a ligand to the metal, um, we have an example of ligand D insertion. And so we can count up our electrons here. This is an L-type ligand, and then we have these two right there. So 10 plus 3 times 2, and the hydrogen remember is an X-type ligand because if it dissociated we would have hydride H minus and Br is also still an X-type so plus two giving us that the number of electrons for this complex is 18. We can see that the product is released right there and we should look at the reaction type going from five to six. In this case we're losing a ligand and this ligand, when we lose it, is neutral. And so this would be a case of Lewis base dissociation. I'll abbreviate it like that. We can look at the electron count here at complex, complex six. The palladium is contributing 10 electrons plus two L-type ligands, making four in total, and two X-type ligands, which would contribute one electron each, meaning that this complex has 16 for its number of electrons. And lastly, we'll look at the reaction going from six to one. Uh, this would be an example of a reductive elimination, because as you can see here, we're going from palladium two to the ground state of palladium. And it's almost like we're removing the palladium from in between this bromine and hydrogen to create a hydrogen bromine bond. So this would be ligand, oh sorry, reductive elimination. Now, that was a lot of drawing and it probably wasn't super clear. So as you can see here, I drew it out in a much neater version. Um, in this drawn out version, I used ethene instead of ethene with the ester attached to it, but all of the reactions are the same and this is just more visually appealing.